Hey everyone, James Reeves with TFB TV. So earlier this week, I did a video called the top five guns to panic buy. Obviously the title, a tongue in cheek reference to the fact that all these people are freaking out because of the coronavirus and they're lining up around gun stores in order to panic buy a gun. So it's kind of like, look, man, if this is gonna be your first time ever buying a gun and you're using it to defend yourself, here's some of the guns I think you should look at if you're gonna panic buy. Well, that video got a ton of views in the first day, ton of comments. So I looked through the comments as much as I could stand. And those comments inspired me to make today's video, which is the top five guns to not panic buy. Rules are the same as the first video. We're assuming this is like your first time gun buy and you're buying a gun to defend yourself. If you're a newbie, these are the five guns I think that you shouldn't purchase. Bear in mind, some gun is always better than no gun, but if you have choices, I think you should stay away from these. Let's start with a layup. Anything in 40 S and W and to a lesser extent, 357 SIG. I don't feel like getting into a caliber war, like 40 versus nine millimeter. And what I mean by that is I don't feel like explaining to 40 fans why nine millimeter is better, but we can do that another day. We'll get to that some other time. Rather, I want to just point out that I think 40 is a bad choice for a first time gun buyer. If you get it in the pistol, 40 or 357 SIG, you're going to have more recoil, you're going to have lower capacity, ammo is going to be more expensive and generally harder to find than 9mm. Another thing to think about from a purely pragmatic standpoint is that 40 S and Ws, while they cost the same, so if you go buy like a Glock 23, it's going to cost the same as a 9mm Glock 19, but the resale value tends to be a lot less. I would say like in the case of a Glock 23 and 40 versus a Glock 19, probably at least a hundred dollar difference, I would think, on the second hand market. So when this whole coronavirus thing blows over and you figured out that you don't want a gun anymore and you took your 40 to the range and shot it a couple of times and you're like, wow, this thing really sucks then you're not going to get as much money when you flip this like 50 rounds later, five months down the road. Number four, revolvers. And whoa, 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 wheel gun guys, calm down. I'm not saying like all revolvers, but while we're on the subject, let's talk about revolvers generally. Revolvers generally going to have lower capacity, going to have a lower rate of fire, going to be more difficult to reload faster. There's also this philosophy, like this train of thought that I see where it's like this gun is older, so it must be simpler. It must be less complicated and easier to use. And I don't think that's exactly the case. That's the argument you see a lot of people making in favor of revolvers. It's simpler. Is it really simpler to show somebody how to swing their cylinder out, use the ejector rod, jam five, six more rounds in there, close it, manage the hammer properly versus loading a full magazine in an auto loader, seating it in the grip and cycling the action? I don't know. I don't think so. But my issue isn't so much with revolvers generally. I mean, I think revolvers are good. I own a few revolvers and I think like a 357 revolver is good because you can use 38 special and that's like a gateway to 357 once you become more familiar with it. Or if you have multiple users and somebody can't handle 357, but they can handle 38. They also tend to be a lot lighter recoiling if you're using 38. So I do like revolvers generally as an option. The problem is, that people go out and they'll get high caliber revolvers like 357 or 44 Magnums. They're like, oh yeah, that sounds good. And then they're absolutely shocked when the muzzle hits them in the forehead the first time they shoot their 44 Magnum. God. Another argument that I see that's somewhat paradoxical is people are like, oh, well, I'm worried about like my elderly grandfather cycling the action on an auto um, and he doesn't have to have any grip strength or strength at all in order to manipulate a 357 Magnum revolver, this 357 Magnum J frame that I want him to have. And it's like, all right, dude, so you can't cycle the action on a Glock but you're gonna be able to handle 357 Magnum out of your J-frame five shot scandium adamantium alloy revolver? I don't think so. 
Pro tip, first time you go shoot like your super lightweight pocketable 44 Magnum, bring like your niece or your nephew, somebody who can give you the Heimlich maneuver after you shoot it and it jumps down the back of your throat. Another one I saw in the comments, the Biden Spech. A lot of people recommending double barrel break open shotguns. Not sure that that's such a good idea. The reason why people were recommending them is they're saying, hey, look, they're powerful, which they are, like a 12 gauge shotgun that's got some power to it, and they're simple. They're very simple to use. To me, again, I see somewhat of a conundrum because it's like, are you so unfamiliar with firearms that you could be expected to load and unload a break open shotgun, but you can't possibly figure out how to use a pump action 12 gauge instead? That to me, I'm not sure that makes any sense. Could you be expected if you fire those two rounds and you need additional rounds to reload it under pressure versus just learning how to use a pump shotgun? I think a pump shotgun is just a flat out better option here. Another argument I saw are people are like, okay, well, what happens if you're too weak to rack the, the pump on a pump action shotgun, but you can use a double barreled shotgun? And it's like, okay, so you can't use a pump. You can't rack a pump on a pump action shotgun, but you are going to pump an intruder full of double hot buck from both barrels whenever he comes crashing in and not go flying out the back fucking window. I don't think so. Number two, the Taurus Judge. And there is, uh, I wrote it down in here, and this is a really popular gun, and I put it on here, up, oh, up, oh, here it is. Oh yeah, um, because it's straight up Chug's dick. Oof, you guys are gonna be mad at me for this one. A lot of you are gonna be really upset because I saw this one quite a bit in the comments and I think the number one top gun to avoid panic buying is the AK-47. Now bear with me, AK guys, I'm gonna explain this to you as best as I can without drawing pictures. I know that would be easier for you to understand, but I'm gonna use my words, and so try to listen. First of all, I love AKs. I think you guys know that. I own more than eight, but fewer than 10 AKs. Absolutely love them. I think they're powerful. I think they're reliable. I think they're durable. I think they're more accurate than people give them credit for. I think they're end of the world guns. I truly do love AKs, but hear me out. Hear me out, I promise. At least some of you are going to agree with me when I say that this is a terrible idea for a first time gun buyer. Picture this, picture the scenario, bear with me. I know you guys, again, AK guys, don't have very good imaginations, but you go into a gun store and you say, I want a Smith & Wesson Shield in nine millimeter. What is the guy behind the counter going to give you in addition to a piece of candy? He's gonna give you a Smith & Wesson Shield in nine millimeter made by Smith & Wesson chambered nine millimeter with Smith & Wesson magazines, and that's what you're gonna get. And the warranty is gonna be from Smith & Wesson, a Smith & Wesson shield. You go into the gun store, you've never bought a gun before in your life, and you say, hey, I want an AK-47. First of all, what does that even mean to a more sophisticated gun dealer? Right, okay, you're gonna ask more questions. You sure you don't want an AK-74? What exactly? Are you sure you don't want an AR-15 and you're just saying AK-47? If you have a gun dealer who kind of knows his way around the customer, he's gonna ask more questions. But I think there's an 87 to 88% chance that if you go into most gun stores in America and they've got AK-47s, that they're going to try to sell you like some American-made piece of dog shit that's got like trunnions that are gonna fall apart after 50 rounds, or that's not gonna have good warranty service and it's gonna be overpriced. Guys, we all learned a lot of lessons. The first battle rifle we bought, like the first, and of course I'm using the term battle rifle loosely. I mean, for me it was an FNFAL, so I mean, that's a battle rifle. But for you guys that bought AKs, I think we all learned lessons. You're like, wow, this first thing I bought, I don't like this about it. It's it kind of a hunk of shit. I feel like I was taken advantage of. Then you go out and you do more research and you buy something better. So it is intimidating. Perhaps buying an AK-47 has to be the most intimidating gun to buy because you don't know where it's from. You don't know who's making it. You don't know if they're still making it. You don't know if there's warranty support. You may not even know what caliber it is. You don't know who makes the mags. It isn't like you can go into the store and say, hey, look, yeah, I need an AK-47 part. You know, is it stamped? Is it milled? Is it Yugo? Is it Russian? Is it Bulgarian? Do you have a Galil? 
and you're calling it an AK-47, that's the thing is it's very complicated for a first time buyer. Does that make sense? But let's be honest, most of these panic buyers are gonna go in, they're gonna buy an AK because it's cool and because it looks scary. But let's just talk about it purely then from an ease of use standpoint. First of all, I beg to differ. A lot of people say, hey, look, the AK is simpler. It's simpler to use than say an AR-15. Not only if you get a 7.62-39, is it gonna have more recoil, but I, I really beg to differ. Charging is a little bit more awkward. Rock and lock magazines, knowing that they're positively secured in place, that can be a little bit more complicated. Also, yeah, buyers that don't understand, like you can buy 10 magazines all made in the same factory. And depending on the AK you have, they might be in spec, they might be out of spec. Five of them might work and five of them might not work. There's just way too many layers to be concerned about for a new buyer to recommend to them that they buy an AK-47. Even though if you get a good one, oh my God, one of the best possible guns you can use to defend yourself. I know some of you guys are already screaming at your computer, yeah, it's so easy that child soldiers can use it. I, look, I don't disagree with that, but I'm not saying that child soldiers couldn't equally use like an AR-15 or an M16. They just don't have access to the good shit like we do here. So they gotta use your crappy AK-47s that are like 70 years old and beat to shit. And for that matter, if I've gotta pick my Boogaloo buddy right now and I have to choose between a 12-year-old Congolese child soldier with an AR-15 that he's using for the first time or my uncle Randy who was in the reserves and has two PhDs and giving him an AK-47, eh, choice is pretty easy. And I think it is for you too. So you AK-47 guys, please don't be mad at me. I think you understand what I'm trying to say. I hope you didn't go wake up your seven-year-old daughter so you could tell her what angry comment to type to me on the YouTube. I'm just glad you watched. And by the way, guys, God, this is all my opinion. Sometimes you guys lose sight of that. I think most of us can agree with 70 to 80% of what I said. And if you don't agree, that's fine, man. It's my opinion, it's your opinion. Leave it in the comments, but please try not to be, you can be a dick to me, just please try not to be a dick to each other. Speaking of opinions, in my opinion, the best sponsor in the entire world, Ventura Munitions, they said they looked like they had gotten robbed. They're totally out of ammo, but when they restock, you guys go check them out online. They probably have right now more ammo than like your local gun store. So go check them out, see what they have. Speaking of Top Gun Supply, the Shooting Sports Superstore, go check them out. Finally, if you enjoyed this content, guys, you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash TFBTV or Subscribestar, subscribestar.com slash TFBTV. Do us a favor, support us, help us out. We're truly independent. We don't accept money for positive reviews like almost every gun channel out there. But most of all, I just want to say thanks a ton for watching. You guys be safe out there. Be excellent to each other right now in these trying times. Take care.